Right, so here we go. Blimey, easy as that. Wow. In this video, I have come to the Vintage Tractor Museum here in Westbury, Tasmania. Yes, I came in a BMW 7 Series, more on that in another video. Uh, we're going to have a nose around this very interesting shed of tractors and um, there's one or two surprises within and uh, we're also going to see if we can get um, some of the exhibits running so it's going to be fun times. Now this museum is not open to the public generally so um, you can't just turn up and have a nose around uh, it's run by Glenn who has you know a job and has it can't be here all the time, but it is possible to make appointments to come and see some of these um, amazing vehicles. And uh, this is just the outside for the facility before we even get into the main shed. I've uh, got this 1961 Fiat, uh, Italian engineering. And uh, I don't know very much about tractors, so that makes life a little more interesting. This one is a case. Uh, that one is an Alice Chalmers. Uh, I can read. I've got a Renault here which is quite interesting. Very um, high driving position on this Renault. A uh, lovely little diamond badge. Early John Deere here with the old um, metal wheels. Uh, and um, an O and K V-twin diesel, which um, Glenn reckons sounds smoother than a Harley Davidson. Frankly, that's not difficult. And now I'll be getting hate mail from Harley Davidson owners. Um, a Steyr here from Austria. Uh, bullfrog, I think it was called, but you know, it's got um, transverse leaf front suspension. It's a bit posh. An old Austin, and uh, yeah, look at this a Massey Harris twin power 102 Junior. And uh, I love this David Brown as well with the, um, the um, lovely cowl on it, very pretty. And uh, an early Howard. I do like the use of bean tins. Here, yeah, it works very nicely. It's another big Ford there, another big dirt with an um, air-cooled engine. The smell of oil is heavy in the air. Another strange, almost free-wheeled tractor. What have we got here? Oh, France, Continental Motors, SIFT. That's an intriguing one. You have to wonder how some of these things got over here. Nuffield here, uh, from Lord Nuffield, I would assume. Uh, Case, that's a very early tractor. Um, Oliver, uh, I think these were made by the Standard Tractor Company, not related to the Standard Car Company. A Normag, wow. <laughs> that just looks amazing. And there is comprehensive parking available also. There are tractors of all ages and the occasional owl. And um, some of these have been in the family a long time. Some have been bought more recently. Um, uh, Glenn's father sort of started the collection um, by kind of being the first person or one of the first in Tasmania to take an interest or in Australia generally in these older vehicles and to start um, putting together this collection, whereas otherwise these vehicles would have gone for scrap. This is a John Deere diesel, and it's a Detroit diesel engine. Um, I wish I could tell you more about it, but um, quite interesting. Uh, it wasn't a long-lived um, thing, having Detroit diesels in John Deere's, but John Deere needed a diesel engine, and they went to the Detroit for them. Uh, lovely old things. Look at this beautiful Hannah mag. Um, Hannah Mag made um, lorries and cars as well um, in Germany. I think what became East Germany, I could be wrong in that. Again, we've got the um, transverse leaf at the front, but um, we'll talk about these more um, in a moment. That's a Deutz tractor, also from Germany. This is one of the oldest tractors they've got here. It's from the 1920s, 1926, I think it is. And all work and um, yeah, I mean, just remarkable when you know you still had your steel wheels um, or metal wheels certainly um, back in the 1920s 
um, but this was bought in very poor condition um, a chassis was remade some parts had to be recast here in Tasmania and uh, yeah it survives and yeah beautiful so I think this was the biggest Deutz that was sold here and uh, apparently um, Glenn's father had a bit of a falling out with the um, Massey Ferguson um, main dealer and so became a Deutz specialist uh, and uh, supplied them to all the local farms. There's a big four cylinder engine in that one. This is an enormous John Deere and uh, these are the next ones which will hopefully be undercover at some point. Um, I think these are fairly recently rescued and there just isn't space undercover but um, I've, they're already fairly well patinated. Uh, this is a HSCS which um, I think was a Hungarian copy of the Lance Bulldog. Um, we'll, we'll look at a Lance Bulldog in a moment but again look really old John Deere, uh, McCormick Deering, uh, I think that's a Holden, uh, a Holder, sorry, same as this one, so that pivots in the middle. Uh, look at this. And another owl. A Ford with a Ferguson system. Right, well, I think we should probably go and have a look in the main barn now, and then we'll see what the lights lurk within. Believe me, it's not just tractors. Right, let's go into the main shed and uh, more Deutz tractors in here. Field Marshal with a huge um, single cylinder engine. It'll just go thump, 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 thump. Uh, run at generally 750 RPM according to the um, information down here. Sunshine, Massey Harris, Pacemaker. I think it's a bold claim for a tractor, if I'm honest. Uh, beautiful McCormick Deering here. Uh, smaller John Deere. Can't have a tractor museum without a grey Fergie, can you? And uh, another field marshal here. Rather shinier condition, an unusual um, Ota with Ford badge as well, three wheeler. Uh, built in Coventry, England with a Ford Prefect engine. There we go. A 1953 president. This has a side valve Morris Minor engine. Gosh, because you know, with gearing, you can achieve almost anything. Yes, I should say this place is well worth um, checking out. But like I say, it's by appointment only. Oh, yes, we must go down this lineup. Enormous Massey Harris 102. Uh, another Marshall. Extraordinary. Good bean tin action. Uh, yeah, I must show you this one. This is um, a Model 70, like my Imbica, um, standard Oliver. And uh, what I, is fascinating about this one is this is a genuine lake find. There's the exhaust. There's someone trying to swim out to get to it. And here it is as pulled out. Uh, apparently the engine survived remarkably well because the oil sort of floated on the water and um, coated the bores. Had to replace one piston. Uh, the tires are the original Lake Fine tires. It had to have new rear wings, and obviously a, a bit of a sprucer. But that's a quite a remarkable story and look at this for a gear pattern good luck finding your way around that brilliant uh, another HSCS from um, Hungary quite extraordinary things another old Deutz a three cylinder engine in that one um, very large six cylinder Massey Harris. Right, I'll just swing down here because otherwise the light is going to be um, getting in the way. Here is the uh, Lance Bulldog, another single cylinder machine. Quite extraordinary. So, yeah, definitely worth coming along to have a 
look at this place. Sorry, the light is um, not the best, but um, it really isn't just tractors. So I think we should probably go and have a look at what else can be found in here. Yeah, models are also very much a thing here. There's an astonishing collection of um, Deutz models. Uh, most of them very, very rare. Uh, if we step through in here, got all manner of cars represented from um, pre-war BMWs, American muscle cars, got um, Holdens as well, a fine collection of model Holdens. Figurines add a touch of colour, there's some beautiful tractor models up here, motorbikes, more tractors and traction engines. And in here, a remarkable collection of brochures, mostly 1930s. Um, try and find one for your enjoyment. Let's pull that one out. Buigate brochure. So open very carefully. New for 1936. There's also a Roots brochure. And uh, this is for the last of the line, Humber, Imperial and Super Snipe, with a six light body. Um, the artist's impression makes it look slightly larger than it is, I think. Um, but if we open it up, here we are, a car of great distinction. Wow. So yeah, not just tractors. Wonderful collection of brochures also. Now I could be here all day going through these brochures, but we'll look at just one more. This original brochure for the TD Midget. Uh, the TD Midget was launched in the um, late 1940s. It was the first one to have independent front suspension and these rather controversial steel wheels. I believe it was a suspension developed by um, Isagonis. And um, I think he intended it to be used on the um, saloon, the Morris 10 saloon, but instead it was used on the um, MGTD, first of all. The unrivaled reputation of the MG Midget. Wow. It's got a 1.25 litre engine. They weren't exactly powerhouses. That dates from 1950. Okay, we're back on the tractor theme again. Uh, Yet more model tractors, even down to the earliest days of them. It's a uh, yeah, remarkable collection and uh, not for sale. Quite extraordinary. And it continues, it just goes on and on. I've got one of these Birago. Porsche 356s that isn't showing up very well there because it's so dark in here. Um, lovely Renault 4 model there by Salido. These are for, mod for sale so you can actually come here and buy some models which helps form the basis of future model collections because the money can be spent well on them. Love this Citroen Ami. Uh, Glenn does like Citroens as well as tractors. But yeah, just extraordinary. Definitely worth um, checking out. Tatra 603 there, Renault 4. Fine, fine collection. Right, Glenn is going to fire up the little Deutz, first of all. What sort of an engine has this one got? Okay, this is what we call an F1M414. It's uh, a water cooled. 15 horse, sorry, 11 horsepower. Mm -hmm. He's coming out in 1936. Okay. Ran into the early 1950s and they did put linkage on them, electric start. Uh, this one is a 1939 import. Mm -hmm. We only probably had one shipment before the war broke out, so very rare little tractor to find. Right. Uh, there's no glow plug, so we're going to uh, put a heater wick in this one, which is, uh, as you see there, these are used in hats diesels. Okay. And generally, they fire on compression in the modern engine, but these days we light this one and put it in just to Give it a little bit more heat. Blimey. If everything goes right, we should get a start. Yeah, so how many cylinders is this so one? Just a vertical single, this one. Right. Yep. 
That's a very different sort of a glow plug. It's very different. That goes in the head. Screw that in there. <laughs> Make sure it's nice and tight. All the water up on the handle drop decompression and everything right, we should start. That. They always get stage fright. Oh. There she goes. Wow. Sounds like it would run all day. Out she comes. Look at that turning circle. Blimey. That's the clutch fork. Wow, look at the length of that. Chug a chug. Beautiful. Massive flywheel for the momentum. Yes, very necessary. Yeah. Victor and Sash make the clutch, I believe. I think they put one in the air cooled one, and it's pretty much the same as a Volkswagen. So Blimey. They use whatever they could. Yeah. yeah. What speed gearbox has it got? This one's got a three speed. Okay. Very slow, slower, and not, not quite slow, slow. Yeah. But yeah. They, uh, they're called a born schlepper in Germany, which meant farmer's tractor, and you generally find that uh, a group of farmers in an area buy a tractor and share it between them. Right. And you'll often see them in German photos with the mid-mount sickle mower on the side. It seems to be a staple component of most small German tractors. Yeah. We have got one for our air cool tractor, but for safety sake, we took it off. Yeah. Super. Lovely. Right then, let's um, see what this is like to drive. Clamber up first of all. So just got the clutch basically there. First of the third, the throttle's just... That's your go throttle, yep. and then that's your idle throttle, and that's it. Oh. Wow. Okay. So, just first gear? Third, okay. Uh, handbrake's off. Here we go then, there we go. Oh, feel it go. The performance is extraordinary. So you adjust the throttle by winding the handle. That's uh, extraordinary. But these, these tractors weren't designed for speed. Like you said, they were kind of designed for small holders where you frankly probably wouldn't go this quick all that often. Well, we'll just test the turning circle, shall we? Oh, look at that. She's very manoeuvrable. we got a power takeoff down here to drive your machinery by the look of it. That's a, a fine way to travel, I should say. We take in the um, tractors as we drive past. Maybe these tractors will get their day. And return to idle. Chug, chug, chug. Brilliant.
Right, right. We're, we're gonna make an attempt to, well, I say we, Glenn is gonna make an attempt to start the field marshal, which is a slightly heftier bit of kit. Um, so we'll see whether this one wants to go. Apparently it hasn't run for a while. So um, fingers crossed, people of the internet. It's six and a half inch bore and nine inch stroke piston to wind up here. So it's a fair bit to get heat into. Good grief. But I'll start firing on, half, on um, nearly half compression stroke. So what we do is we put a preheat igniter wick in. This is um, blotting paper soaked in a mixture of, we well, used to be salt peter, we now use potassium nitrate. Mm -hmm. I've got to make another batch up. It's a very messy job. so. It's one of those jobs has gone on the back burner. You can see it fizzing there. It'll burn slow, but very hot. Mm. And basically it's a, it's a preventative from stop it backfiring more than anything. So. Yeah, because is it a two-stroke yeah. diesel? two-stroke, yeah. Yeah, so you got the danger that it'll kick and go the, other, the yeah, wrong way. can do, so we'll decompress it there. Uh, in. Good grief. Look that's, at that for a starting hand. That's a serious bit of kick. Yeah. That goes in there. Let's burn the way nicely. So we'll burn down a little bit more to so make sure we've got the heat. That should be enough. Put that in the head. Oh, so it's a horizontal? Yes. yes and and that's the top yep. of the cylinder head? Top of the cylinder head, yeah. There's, you can start them with a 12 ball cartridge with just grey and black powder in them. That's, that's the breach at the top. Blimey. And the charge out the bottom floor with that. Uh, we don't use that. All right, we'll see how we go. Blimey, easy as that. Wow. The whole vehicle is shaking. I think my camera is. Um, Leveling it out automatically. Sorry, she's coming out. The whole tractor's shaking. My camera is um, just, um, yeah, leveling it out. I need to turn off rock steady on my DJI action camera. It's a tight fit, blimey. This is the best museum ever. Just wind the tooth up. Yeah. So there you go, you're in second gear, it's low range anyway. That's your throttle there. Yeah, Thank you. Feel free to go in the big paddock if you want to go out that way. Okay, yep. No right. Are you ready? Here we go. That's the throttle down there. I think we'll go into the big field. Oh, this is extraordinary. I can't promise that every visitor gets to do this. I suspect this is a bit of a perk. Make sure we're going to get through the gate. Yeah, there we go. This is the best day at work ever, to quote Mr. Finnegan. So we've got low and high range on this lever down here. 
and then this one takes us from first reverse, third and second. We're currently in second. Amazing. Imagine being sat behind this wheel for hours at a time. Everything is so mechanical, the throttle. Just this bar, direct mechanical link to the um, single cylinder engine. But we do have separate brakes, I don't know if they work. your old limited slip diff right there. Oh, imagine living over there. But that horse doesn't seem scared though. Beautiful spot here near Launceston. Tasmania Oh, that's windy Might slow down with this headwind Clutch disengaged and my foot on it. You can see that. Oh, don't stop. Oh no. That wasn't meant to happen. Yeah, you remember you pull them up well on the compression rather than pushing. Or you, yeah, yeah. I did go the wrong way one day and I got kicked in the guts and laid out. So I learned from my mistake. Yeah, this thing must kick as well. It can do. Um, a lot of people are frightened them and they think all oh, the handles are sticking, which they can do. Dad had one do that when he was a young fella, but uh, no, but if you just don't watch that decompression when you just can't sort of one, two by two, you should be putting your back into it. Right. It's only so fast you can go anyway. So once you get into that, you're all right. Just get into a rhythm, so to speak. Yep. Shouldn't take much to start of here. She's alive again. Should we go again first, do you reckon? Try third. Just make sure you are actually recording. You are actually recording. I'm shaking all over the place. There we go, we're in top gear now. It 
doesn't necessarily feel any faster at all. My, my, what a day. Don't forget to screw up. Getting the McCormick Deering going now. What engine does this one have? This is the International Zone engine. It's a 152 cubic inch. Yeah. Uh, about 20, 25 horsepower. Good for two to three fire a bottom plow in our conditions here. Yeah. We're a very popular little tractor. Uh, so what does it run on? Uh, this one, you would say petrol, kerosene, or TBO as you call it in here. Yeah. Yeah. Vaporizing oil. We're running straight petrol at the moment. Uh, same engine was used in the Farmall H with the little wheels, which is the one we've got down the back. Yeah. But yeah, this one was purchased back in 1986 for, uh, I think it was $100. Uh, you know, wow. It's been back a couple of times in the last 20 years trying to buy it back and we've seen it restored. But, uh, it's as it goes. three turns to start. We give a two to primer on spark off and then one to spark on half choke. So we'll see how we go. Right here. Oh, beautiful. Oh yeah, just checking the gauges. We're actually styled by Raymond Lowy, who designed the studio bay for the Oh wow. Yeah, he did the international and Henry Drake's and associates did John Deere. So, um, yeah, quite interesting to tie out with these industrial designs. Yeah, I mean, he would design anything, wouldn't he? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Out she comes. Sounds very different to the field marshal. You can see a power take off down here for running your equipment off the back. Lovely. Just strapped up for a ride. Uh, we shall get the clutch in we shall go for third I hope that is and um, that's the throttle and away we go I'm gonna say goodbye to the field marshal that one's going away Oh, watch out for the free-range chickens. This feels like a very laid-back, sort of sp almost sporty driving position. So you've got the brakes coupled at the moment. You flip that lever for independent brakes, or flick it down to operate both at the same time. You know, wait for it to gap, give her a few more revs. Oh, listen to that sports exhaust. So you got the um, gauges there, so I can see whether she's running too hot, whether there's oil pressure. See if the brakes work. Oh, no, it's still operating on both. There you go, I'm pulling myself into a right turn just with the brakes. That's a very good demonstration of the independent brakes going on. Oh, the left brake apparently works better. Look at that! No hands! So 
yeah, we've got the hand throttle down there. I'm going to see if we can find fourth. I think that will be fourth. And we'll bring the revs on again. There we go, we're away in fourth. Oh yeah, this is the life. Do the steering thing again, there we go. It's like magic. Wonderful. Now we are unleashing a monster. Big three cylinder engine. This one's glow plug start, so not so much nasty warning and efforts in this one. Uh, about 54 horsepower at a thousand revs. Right. Uh, yeah, beautiful big motor. Mm. Uh, glow plug indicator on. Beautiful. There is one more very special vehicle he has here. There will be more coming on that. Heavy old work. That is a big old thing. Right, here we go then. We've got, again, brakes over here with the little link thing. Uh, K for clutch. Uh, so I'll get the clutch in. And uh, lift this sleeve, go over yeah. into fourth gear. A uh, bit of. Not that much. I should do. And we're away. So the engine is 351 cubic inches, which is considerably over 5 litres. And it's a three cylinder engine, so those are very, very big cylinders indeed. I feel tiny, but you know, I've got a rear view mirror on my cons. Whoa! This picks up well. Oh, I see. That's what that little thing is there. You can use that ratchet to hold the throttle open. Make sure I don't drive into any other tractors. Oh. Funnily enough, a 351 cubic inch three cylinder diesel engine is quite heavy.
as you've taken the tappet cover off so you can see the enormous valves being operated incredible just lubricating the top end there is no pressure lubrication so you have to do it yourself what year is this one? 1951 1951, blimey about 21,000 miles wow, 21,000 hours yeah, look, the door, mate, you see that the hole's worn on the back of it Yeah, the jack shaft driving the fuel pump and the injector so it's firing as and when it needs brilliant well that has been a thoroughly uh, entertaining morning here at the vintage tractor shed um a, a brilliant time driving some of these um tractors but like i say you can come and visit but you do need to um contact glenn um, contact details are there i will repeat them in the description below also has models for sale and um, occasionally a tractor or two for sale they're not all for sale by any stretch of the imagination but some of them are so it's um, worth inquiring but um, yeah fantastic fun for everyone so i shall say thank you very much for watching and i look forward to seeing you in a future video farewell <laughs>